Mockbuster is a term used to describe a film rushed through production in order to trick audiences into thinking it's a currently popular movie. While the practice dates back to the 1950s, it became much more common after the rise of home media and especially in the wake of video rental stores. Different from simple ripoffs, Mockbusters are often written before the actual movie has come out. Films like Snakes on a Train or Metal Man have gained some notoriety, but the most common target for these Mockbusters is Disney films for two big reasons. First, many Disney movies are based on public domain stories, meaning in most cases these companies can just call their films the same thing as the Disney movie. Plus, the story is already written for them, so there's less guesswork. Second is how easily duped children and parents can often be. And while many companies have attempted to cut into Disney's profits, one was far cheaper, far more mysterious, and yet far more well known. This is the story of Dingo Pictures a company known by many as the creators of the worst animated films ever, the creators of so many memes, and yet, so little is known. Today we explore everything we know about Dingo Pictures. Very little information exists about Dingo Pictures, and what information does exist often leaves more questions. Sources are hard to find. Dingo's website is still up online, but it hasn't been updated since sometime before 2007. The email associated seems to be out of service, and while a building exists at the address provided, nothing short of a trip to Germany would reveal what actually goes on there. Compounding the problem is the amount of misinformation about Dingo. Many animations are erroneously credited to them, and their bootleg wiki page is one big citation needed. For instance, the release dates provided just don't make sense. They list Dingo's Atlantis as coming out in 1997, four years before the Disney movie, and their citation leads to a random Russian website. Dingo has a list of their movies on their website, and it just makes sense for that to be their correct chronological order. It has films known to have come out earlier at the top, with movies based on later films towards the bottom. But again, I can't say anything for sure. Maybe Dingo did release Atlantis four years before the Disney version. So here's what we can't say for sure. Dingo Pictures was a German company based out of Friedrichsdorf. The company was started by Ludwig Eckert and Simone Greis. It's been suggested that Eckert and Greis were married, supposedly based on something said in Sword of Camelot, though this seems to be false as the film makes no mention of this. The German version is around 15 minutes longer than the English cut, but a version of that cut with sound isn't available online, and what we have seems to indicate that isn't the case. Again, they could be married, but there's no proof. This is why talking factually about Dingo can be so difficult. In the early days, they simply made video storybooks, where a narrator would talk over a slideshow of drawings. However, around 1993, they would make the jump to animation with an adaptation of the Greek myth Perseus. This film has noticeably better animation than Dingo's later films would come to have, however, it's mostly been lost to the ages. There is no mention of it on Dingo's website, and the only existing dub is from an Italian DVD. It's pretty clear this was made by Dingo, or at least the people who would go on to be Dingo, and why it's disappeared is unclear other than perhaps it didn't fit with their later animations. Their first Disney ripoff, and the oldest film Dingo has associated themselves with, is Goldie, Adventures in the Forest of Mystery, a film that blatantly rips off Disney's Bambi. In these early years, the studio had the bizarre name of Media Concept, and it's unknown when they switched to the name Dingo Pictures. Dingo's many, many detractors have pointed out how simple the animation is, with many characters being poorly designed or just retraces of Disney characters. They're also well known for using the exact same character designs as multiple different characters throughout all their films. Compounding these problems is the terrible English dub, which only uses a handful of actors, estimated to be no more than eight, playing every character by only slightly altering their voice. There was a silence in the jungle again. Again, the old lion was the animal's king again, and the bad panther was driven off. This often leads to confusion over which character is talking at any given time. Well, you are stupid. They're special because they can split fire and ashes, and then hot lava flows down the mountains from the side. Rubbish. No, it's not. Have you ever seen it? Uh, no, but, uh, so there, you're just showing off. Dialogue is similarly nonsensical, with it often being speculated that the people translating these films don't fully understand English. 
Others, however, believe that the translators don't understand German and just write to fill mouth movements rather than actually contribute to the scene. One problem that may contradict the last theory, however, is how often shots of characters talking are shown with no dialogue. Exactly. In fact, the audio editing is similarly criticized, with lines frequently being messed up and left in the film, along with many other audio problems. And it was the animals owed it to Little Robin's cleverness. This may not actually be Dingo's fault, as the German dubs are often much better in this regard, and who actually did these voices is unknown. Credits have been found on certain releases of the film, however, as they contain Ludwig Eckert's name, it's often assumed these are the credits from the German version, though it's still possible that the German team also did the dubs for English, as well as the Italian, French, Russian, and Spanish versions that also exist. However, none of the German voices seem to match anyone in the English dub. What makes this even more mysterious is the bizarre way these films were distributed. Three different companies have done releases of the English versions of these films, with only one actually distributing DVDs. The other two, Midas Interactive and Phoenix Games, are game publishers. Due to the similarities between both companies' releases, it's thought that the two might be the same company. Midas was at least responsible for a few releases including Lion and the King and Lord of the Apes, but once again it's unknown how many they did as even the Dingo games they're known to have released aren't listed on their website. They do, however, release some legitimate and even well-received games, with these dingo games falling into something of a bargain line. It's possible that Phoenix was just a second company made to distance Midas from these releases. Phoenix, meanwhile, seems to have almost exclusively made games based on shoddy animations, with some featuring what are apparently unique animations also based on Disney films, including Peter Pan and Snow White. These are similarly low quality, but are much shorter than the Dingo films and feature a different voice cast, though they're often erroneously attributed to Dingo. Phoenix did make other games, though all were cheaply produced and universally panned. They would declare bankruptcy in 2009, and it's speculated that lawsuits were involved. In both Phoenix and Midas' case, these games featured a handful of basic mini-games, including puzzles, slide puzzles, and coloring pages. Usually these games would feature stills from the cartoon, but the Midas release of Lion and the King features stills from the anime Kimba the White Lion, a show that was a big inspiration on Disney's The Lion King. Its appearance in this game is likely unlicensed. Among these mini-games would often be an option for a movie, leading to the Dingo movies. The reason for the similar releases appears to be because the games were developed by The Code Monkeys, a British developer, with Midas and Phoenix simply acting as distributors. This may contradict the idea that Midas and Phoenix were at all related, outside of their deals with the Code Monkeys, but it's just as likely they are related. Interestingly, the Code Monkeys actually have a substantial body of work, including licensed games such as Shrek Treasure Hunt and The Simpsons Skateboarding. So why they ever bothered with these cheap Disney ripoffs is even more questionable. These games would be released on PlayStation 1, 2, and 3, and later the Nintendo Wii and DS. This bizarre method of distribution would be what drew many people to these films in the first place. However, DVDs of these films do exist. A company called East West Video would release nearly all of Dingo's films directly onto DVD. East West was known for low-quality dollar store releases of any animation they could get for cheap or free, and their Dingo releases are no exception. The cases for the DVDs are flimsy and have as a bonus feature very poor transfers of public domain cartoons. This further muddies the water on who dubbed these films as two films, Aladdin and Wabu the Little Raccoon, were dubbed by what sounds like an adult man and a young boy, uncommon to the Dingo voice cast. Do you have an idea? Here! Bubble took out a bag of chocolates. These dubs are likely from East West Entertainment, as neither of these films ever got a Phoenix release, and the voices appear to be in other East West distributed cartoons. These dubs are noted to be of an even lower quality, with a smaller voice cast not even attempting different voices for different characters, the same looping soundtrack the whole film, and actors who even occasionally read stage directions. Hit the doorstep, and I'm going to the market. Finally, exiting. 
At least a few more films would be released exclusively to East-West DVD, such as Jamie the Little Pig, or were released in a much more complete state than they were on Phoenix's release, such as Sword of Camelot, which was released without its live-action segments despite an English dub for them existing. Both have the usual voice cast, making it very likely that these dubs were done by Dingo themselves or a group hired by Dingo. Aiding this is the one other film that has a different voice cast, Animal Soccer World, perhaps Dingo's most infamous film. France! What's the matter? Yeah, bad news! A group of hooligans is on their way! Oh no, that was just what we're missing. A group of hooligans. This one was released exclusively by Phoenix Games, so it's very likely they dubbed this one, East West dubbed Wabu and Aladdin, and Dingo themselves dubbed the rest. There are some other oddities among their different dubs. Firstly, some cartoons were never dubbed to English, and there are even some that are considered completely lost. Additionally, the list on their website mentions English dubs for King of the Animals and Arisha the Little Witch, neither of which are known to have been translated. It's possible these dubs were made by Dingo, but neither Midas, Phoenix, nor East West ever distributed them. Arisha is likely the last Dingo movie ever released, explaining its lack of distribution, but King of the Animals was one of their first, even getting a sequel that was translated to English. Perhaps this one missed distribution because they already had a film that could pretend it was The Lion King? However, a few releases call it Lion and the King 2, suggesting they might have released an English dub and a copy has just never surfaced. Also, some dubs are only available through foreign DVDs. While Goldie has seen a normal Dingo release in English, there's apparently a second English dub on the Russian DVD made by the Russian voice cast. Additionally, East West released a French DVD for the Bremen Town Musicians, which has the only English dub of the film. As many people have pointed out, the more you learn about Dingo, the less sense it makes. While this is all that's known about their production, there is one more facet of these films worth exploring, and one that is considerably more well documented. Their status in internet culture. Many curious gamers and internet types began discovering these films, with clips of them appearing on YouTube as early as 2010. One would be used as the basis of a very popular meme entitled, Yee. Yee. This video was posted in 2012 and began gaining traction in 2014. It was remixed many times and would be the first video in the now infamous Important Videos playlist. But Dingo was about to make a jump into the popular conscious of the internet through one of its favorite pastimes comedy reviews. The first creator to discuss one of these films was video game critic James Caddick, known by his username Cat Icarus. In March of 2014, he discussed the film More Dalmatians under its bizarre alternate title Dalmatians 3 in a video titled The Worst Video Game Ever Made, which remains his most popular video. And Caddy wouldn't be alone for long. By the end of 2014, YouTubers Tinnings, Phalus, Snip and Wib, and DXFFan619 would also have a crack at Dingo Pictures and Phoenix Games, all to considerable success. Videos on Dingo Pictures from these creators, as well as several others, continue to gain far more views than many of their other videos. Dingo Pictures appears to have closed up shop some time ago. The oldest archive of their website is from 2007, but it's likely they stopped updating it long before then. Their final films are reported to have come out in 2004. One has to wonder what these people would think of the criticisms leveled against them and the internet's bizarre fascination with them. It's undeniable how weird these films are, but the complete lack of information on these people only makes their films that much weirder. Will we ever have an answer to these questions? It's unlikely. But I'd like to think someday we might know a bit more about the studio making cheap-looking Disney ripoffs that's captured the attention of anyone they've come in contact with. Until that day comes, I'm Matt, and I hope you have a good day. Hey friends, it's your boy, Matt. Uh, I, ho I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to do a follow-up video. Um, so, th there's a lot of stuff I had to cut out. I tried to keep this very factual, so there's a lot of stuff I had to cut, either because there just wasn't enough information on it, or because it got too jokey, and I, I didn't want this to be like a jokey video. Um, so if you've got, uh, any questions, 
or any more information about Dingo Pictures, if you'd like to fact check me or add on something I didn't mention in the video, um, that'd be great. I would love to learn even more about this company. Don't send me stuff that I could find very easily with a Google search. If, if it's on like the, the Mockbuster wiki page, I've probably read it. Um, send me stuff with a citation, please. Um, that's all I gotta say. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.